Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Today we're going to be looking at computer repair training, hardware, lesson one, part two. Also uh, on here you can see the computer repair training plus uh, com. This is a website where you can find some additional resources uh, for the material that we're covering. You might check that out if you're interested. Uh, motherboard. We're going to be looking at the motherboard today. This is the main board, the largest circuit board in the computer. Uh, it contains the CPU, memory, uh, north bridge, south bridge, a lot of other parts. We'll be talking about those parts. The main categories on the motherboard, we have the processing, the CPU, temporary storage, the RAM, uh, communications, and power. We'll be discussing those. Uh, everything says all communicate with the CPU. Everything on the motherboard, everything connected to the computer, all has to communicate with the CPU. CPU is the central processing unit. Every piece of data that's generated has to be processed by the CPU. Peripherals. Now, peripherals are devices that are, that are connected to the computer and they're linked via a cable. So you have some kind of a data cable that connects uh, devices to the computer, such as the keyboard has a connection. Mouse has a connection. Monitor has a connection. You might also have a modem or a cable for a network. That also uh, is a peripheral device connected to the computer. Uh, here's an example of a motherboard. You can see there's quite a few components on the motherboard. Uh, either on or off the motherboard, again, everything has to communicate to the CPU. CPU has to process all the data. Uh, here's a side uh, view of the motherboard uh, with some of the I.O. connections. Uh, this is an ATA, ATX styled motherboard. Uh, again, here you can see here, this is an ESATA. These are external uh, SATA or external serial drives. Uh, the new uh, technology, 3 gigabits per second. Also, we have USB 2. Uh, we have 8 ports here. Also, we have uh, on the top of this, we have a firewire connection and uh, a gigabit LAN. A gigabit LAN is a billion bits per second LAN connection. Uh, audio, we have a little uh, uh, optical audio connection here and your other uh, typical audio ports. Uh, CPU and chipset. CPU performs the data processing. It processes all the data and the instructions. Now the chipset, it's microchips, uh, they control this data flow. We'll be talking about the chipset. It's very important. Uh, because they do manage the flow of the data on the motherboard. Manufacturers of CPUs and chipsets, Intel being the major, number one, 80% of the market is controlled by Intel. Uh, AMD is a good competitor. Uh, we've enjoyed keeping, having them uh, keeping Intel on their toes. We also have VIA, S, SIS, and Cyrix. Uh, here's uh, showing uh, the chipsets. We've got the north bridge right here, and then we have a south bridge. The North Bridge controls the memory to the CPU, also the video card. So the, more, the North Bridge has to operate very quickly. Uh, otherwise, we can have a, a bottleneck in our computer. So we have to have fast RAM and a fast video card in order to keep our computer running at its top speed. There's also a South Bridge down here. Now, the South Bridge can control everything else. Your PCI connectors here, uh, any SATA or any hard drive connections. Also, any firewire, uh, mouse port connections, uh, keyboard connections. So if everything else goes through here. Uh, here's a diagram. CPU uh, Northbridge stands for, uh, or NB stands for Northbridge. It's also called the memory controller. Uh, Intel just recently moved their memory controller onto their CPU with the uh, Core i7. Uh, the video and RAM are normally controlled with the North Bridge. And then the South Bridge, again, controls everything else. And this is a diagram I've drawn up, and I expect my students to be able to draw it too. So you might take notes on this, because I'm going to ask you to draw it. Storage devices. Primary storage. Primary storage is temporary. It's RAM. Uh, computer needs a lot of RAM in order to uh, push data and instructions through it. The RAM is usually very fast, not quite as fast as the CPU, but much faster than our secondary storage device, the hard drive. The RAM today can push uh, gigabits of data, where the hard drives are still constrained to about 100 megabits, considerably slower. Uh, this is a picture of Corsair uh, RAM module. Uh, RAM again, temporary holding. Uh, these have a slot on here for connecting them to the motherboard. They're fairly easy to connect. They just push straight down to the motherboard today. 
It says RAM memory is a temporary place to hold instructions and data, while the CPU uh, does process both. Primary storage, RAM, random access memory. It's temporary. Three types. We have DIMM, RIM, and SIMS. DIMMs are pretty much all we see today. There's uh, dual inline memory modules, DDR1, DDR2, and now DDR3. It's getting faster and faster because the CPUs demand uh, faster memory. RAM is volatile. This is, means when the power is turned off, that memory goes away. We need a hard drive or some kind of a storage device in order to be a permanent memory. Uh, ROM, this is read-only memory, non-volatile. That's on the motherboard to help the computer start up. We need some kind of an, uh, instructions that the computer can can run when it first turns on. And we'll be talking about the uh, that uh, power on self-test that is performed by the ROM. Uh, here's a picture of some memory slots. We've got actually two memory slots here. This would be a tool, a dual channel uh, memory. Uh, anytime you have dual channel to utilize it, you need to split your memory across both. If we we're going to put two gigs of RAM on here, we would want to put one gig on one slot and then one gig on the other slot, not two on one. Otherwise, you don't get the full benefit of your dual channel. The dual channel will increase the the ability for the memory to be read by the CPU considerably because we have two separate channels. Secondary storage, again, the hard drive, uh, disks that rotate at high speed, they're mechanical devices, old, antiquated uh, technology being replaced by today's new digital drives. Uh, ATA is one of, this, one of the technologies used. Uh, there's also a newer technology called SATA. Uh, Parallel ATA accommodates up to four IDE devices. This is an example of an older IDE drive. This has six platters. Today, most of the drives only have two platters. This has the cover removed. Normally, you don't want to remove the cover and expose this because dirt or contamination will destroy the drive. Here you see an IDE cable, a 40-pin cable, uh, being connected to a hard drive and to a CD-ROM. Now, a lot of these cables are now 80-pin cables. They look pretty much the same. You still have 40-pin connectors, but they allow the data to be driven a little bit faster. Only one connection on the motherboard here. A lot of motherboards have two connections so that we can put four devices on the motherboard, on the, on the computer. Secondary storage continued. Uh, the new types of uh, hard drives, the serial ATA, uh, outperform the IDEs about two times. They're, they're considerably faster. IDEs run at about 50 megabits per second or megabytes per second. The serials run at about uh, 100. ID, IDE devices, hard drive, zip drive, CD-ROM, quite a few things uh, have been developed to connect to the IDE. Uh, floppy drive, a uh, small uh, device. You don't see them on a lot of the computers today. doesn't hold much data, only 1.44 megabytes. Uh, CD-ROMs, compact disc, uh, we do see a lot of those today. We need those to run our uh, DVDs. Uh, here's a 34-pin floppy drive connector. You can find them sometimes on the motherboard. In review, uh, motherboard, uh, CPU, chipsets, memory. I uh, need to remember that the chipsets are, are there to support the CPU. We have a north bridge or memory controller that supports the RAM memory and the video card, a south bridge. Uh, supports everything else on the computer. Primary storage, remember this, is the RAM. Secondary storage is the hard drive. Activities, I want you to draw the CPU, RAM, video, Northbridge uh, diagram. I want you to show me how that is set up. It's very important to have a good understanding of that. It's a good question that I would ask uh, during an interview. I want you to do lab 1.2, and I want you to identify the computer parts on that motherboard and also the parts on the computer. I want you to answer those and then turn those in. That's it for now. Thank you very much for your time.